Welcome to ADAS Amy. Today we have a short video of two calibrations which really is becoming more and more one system. Let me show you. This is a beautiful 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe. This is their new design. And this vehicle was in a front end collision and we're going to do a calibration on the front distance sensor and the front camera, the what we know as a lane departure camera. But more and more I see these new vehicles, they're combining these systems as one. Beautiful interior. This is a basic model, it doesn't have a whole bunch of fancy dashboard, but it still has a ton of software and electronics behind this plain looking exterior. This is a typical dashboard, couple of buttons, radio, display, really nice interior vehicle layout, but it still has, even though this is a manual AC heater system, don't be fooled, it still has electronic actuators that control these doors. It's got electric parking brake, traction, yes, this is not a push button start, this is a manual key. Powering up the ignition, looking at all the sensors, there are no codes. But this vehicle was crashed in the front and the body shop replaced all the components, the bumper, the fender, and they realigned everything and put it back together. Before this vehicle can go safely on the road, there's a radar hiding right behind that panel. And our job today is to make sure that the radar and the lane departure camera are calibrated to factory specs before we deliver this vehicle. So today we're going to go through both systems using the Hyundai tablet. Hyundai is the first company to put all of their software and service manuals, look at this beautiful illustration pictures, on a Samsung tablet with a VCI interface, which we're not going to get into here. But we're going to go into the service manual and look at the instructions and familiarize ourselves with the system. A lot of people that are doing calibrations and programming and trying to get into this business, which is great to have new, new people that are interested coming into the car business, but you need to read everything. These systems incorporate lots of modules in the car and you first thing you have to do is familiarize with the setup of each system. They're very different from make and model. Once you read over the basic instructions, the basic outlines, now you're ready to move forward and start setting up your process of calibration. Remember, if you want to calibrate a vehicle, you're coming in as a wind, windshield replacement guy. If you have an ABS code, if you have a traction, a park brake system, an airbag deployment code, you're unable to calibrate the windshield. Even though you just tasking one thing, you just want to do that one thing, it doesn't work that way. Cars are a complete system. They share information throughout the car, all the modules. So now we're going to set up a plumb bob. Yes, the same plumb bob that was used in Egypt thousands of years ago to build the pyramid. Well, maybe theirs were made out of rock. We set up a plumb bob, we set up a center line, and once we get a perfect straight line, we're ready to start setting up some targets. We got the straight line. We tape it securely to the floor because we're going to use this straight line for a lot of different reasons. So we want to make sure that it stays. I just put a little target because I'm going to use a digital meter. Instead of using tape measures, these digital meters are just amazing. They can measure so precisely and so quickly and so accurately that it's just amazing. You can use any laser, any laser measurement system. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, Bosch, anything you pick up in, the, in your local hardware store. Well, look how we're zooming in. I'm trying to get to 2,500 millimeters. These are so accurate that if it says 24.99, it's down to the point. If you just a little bit of patience, you can dial these in so accurate. Look at that, 25 millimeters, 2,500 millimeters. And the green laser light is really cool because they're very bright. 
Now that I got my target, I got the exact center line. I got exactly where I want to put it. I'm placing my target. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this target and the new changes that they came up with. But for now, the height, I got the instructions, the height from the floor. I got my center and I got my distance. Now I'm ready to go through 385 millimeters from the floor to the center of the cone. This is very important because when the laser light shoots out its signal, it's actually looking for the center and then it shoots out signals on the cone and it can detect the minute billionth of a millisecond that the signals are bouncing back and then that's how it indicates up, down, left, right. It's an amazing complex system. We're going to go into the instructions and now that we're ready to set up, we're going to go into software management. On the software management on this, it gives you all the calibration procedures through that. It's going to give you brief instructions in this menu as well, but you really should read the service manual to make sure. Now it's just giving you all the precautions. Yes, the engine should not be running, ignition on, and this is another thing. The serial number has to be inputted into the system in order for you to figure out the angle that it's supposed to sit. Because it's behind the bumper, we're going to use a digital camera that we're going to angle just correctly to get the sticker on the back of the radar. Each unit is manufactured with a serial lot number. The last two digits of the lot number tells the system when this was manufactured the exact minute differences of how the angle is to make it perfectly straight. The number is 07. So we're going to type in 07 into the tablet of the instructions. Once you hit that, it tells you that it wants you to put it minus 1.7 degree, meaning facing a little bit downwards because that's the mold. You see that red line, that part number? We're going to get to that a little bit later. So we got the adjustment on the radar just perfect. We got our targets perfectly where they want it. Now we can proceed with the calibration. Remember, you cannot have any diagnostic codes in almost any system in the vehicle for you to be successful. It has to be on a level floor. You can't have any other stuff interference. Once you have everything set up right, look, 2.1, which is well within the spec, and the other, the, the actual horizontal was perfect. Now we're going to go back to the service manual and take a quick look on the instructions to program the camera in the windshield. Today's system are sharing information between the windshield camera and the radar. So the actual distance, sign recognition, pedestrian crossing, and there are certain things that a radar is good at detecting, and then there are certain things that a radar is very bad at detecting, so it uses the camera to compensate. So between those two systems, you get a full warning system all around the front of the car, no matter what system you use. So these things work in conjunction. So you have to calibrate both of them. And this is the trend that I'm seeing all the new cars are going. Look at how many systems a Hyundai Santa Fe has parking this and just look at the menu of systems they are. You need to familiarize with all of it. If you're going to do one system, there's no such thing that you only do air conditioning. You only work on brakes or you only do an engine tune-up or you're only going to do windshield replacement. It doesn't work that way. The cars are designed as a complete system. You need to understand how every single system works in a vehicle in order for you to be successful. That's why I'm urging all my viewers start getting the factory software with the factory targets. Do not rely on aftermarket because this information is not available. So now we're getting set up to do the camera calibration. It shows you where the clips are. It shows you where it's supposed to be laying it. It shows you how to remove it, how it's mounted on the windshield. If you don't familiarize yourself with this information, how are you going to know if the camera is in correctly? How do you know that it's in the right spot? How do you know there's no problem? And then it tells you, if you're going to replace it, this is what you need to do. If you're not going to do the variant coding, if you're not, this is what you need to familiarize yourself before you go to the car. Once again, Hyundai and Kia are using a very different system. 
This is the height they want you to be, and they only give you a tolerance of one centimeter. They have two different setups. These are not two options. This is in conjunction. You have to start with the first setup, and then you move it in front of the vehicle, and you do the second one. So we're going to set up all our targets. Obviously, the first target is right by the front bumper. The other one is at this mark. Let's go back for one minute on the radar target. Radar target does not visually see anything. This is the new part number that Honda, Kia, and Genesis, I don't know why it comes in this plastic electrical waterproof box and it's nicely packaged in a foam, but I have a habit of ordering every new product that comes out. I search all the catalogs. So I ordered this a couple of months ago. I didn't know what it was. But then as I'm starting reading the instructions, Hyundai Kia didn't want you to go and replace your target, so they molded and created a larger target that fits on to the original little triangle. And they made these beautiful molded knobs with knots so you can mount it onto the original one. All the new vehicles are using the larger target. So now back to the windshield calibration. This is the target. You could buy this directly from Honda or Kia. I think it's about $265. That camera is going to need to be calibrated with this target. I keep everything covered because I don't want any dust or dirt get on it because the camera has to see exact black and white dots. So if there's any dirt or distortion, it's going to mess it up. So my first task is to follow the instructions and set the target at the exact height from the floor. Now I'm going to put the first step. The first step is to put it right up against the front bumper, exactly in the center of the vehicle. Now I'm ready to set up my calibration through the scan tool. I already have my second mark marked on the floor. So when it's going to tell me to move it, I don't have to waste a whole lot of time. I can put it right on the target. S-P-T-A-C, calibration. So with this, let me show you how you get into it. You get to software management, and then we're going to go to the front view camera on the menu. And from here, we're going to go into calibration, and that gets you into the menu. Now, this is a Samsung tablet. It's not something that Honda. This is a Samsung tablet. Yes, you have to use a specific model number that the engineers designed the software to work on this Samsung tablet. We didn't show you in this video the interface. Now it's giving you a brief rundown of what you think. The most important thing is that you have to do it indoor. You can't have any direct light. You can't have any sun glare. You can't have anything blinding the camera. And it gives you all the, this is the same instructions, just a summary of what you read already in the service manual. Now it's calibrating the first step. If everything is measured, and correctly, it, this step goes through pretty quickly, and it usually doesn't fail. If it fails, maybe it's a new camera, you didn't do the variant coding, maybe there's other codes in the rest of the car, maybe they put the wrong part number, there could be a lot of different reasons. That's why it's important to have original software, original targets, and have the service manual so you understand everything about the car. Now we can move it to the second phase. This is the second step, Exactly, you have to be in center. We already pre-measured it, so now we're ready to move to the second process. Look how fast it takes. Calibration successfully completed. Now these two, ca the camera and the radar are working in conjunction the way it's designed. All that's left to do now is do a quick scan on all the computers on this vehicle, and we're ready to go. If you enjoy technology, if you enjoy automotive, if you're new to this channel, Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, so I know that people are interested and I'll keep bringing you the latest calibration. Thank you for watching ADOS Aiming by Jack Short.